Hello and welcome to Top 5 Friday. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. As I was saying, hello and welcome to Top 5 Friday. I'm your host and pleasure model, Tim Kant, and I've seen since you wouldn't believe. That's right, it's 2019, it's officially the future, and in lieu of going for a spin in a flying car, we're gonna check out some of the most futuristic synths around. So without further ado, it's time to start plugins. We show you the way to Aparillo at five. Quanta gets us in a right state at four. Cypher is keeping all of our secrets at three. We're getting into the zone at two. And our end game all along was to have Avenger as number one. At five, Aparillo by Sugarbytes. This plugin synth brings its digital stylings to multiple platforms and is available both as a traditional plugin and as an app for iOS. Aparillo gets its tones from FM synthesis, but you wouldn't necessarily know it with abstract symbols used to represent its controls. The thing that really blasts Aparillo off into space though is the orbiter panel. This is a visual modulation editor that arranges those symbols around a center where they can move around through editable paths to change the sound. Elsewhere, Aparillo's effect section includes a spatializer, multi-mode filter, polyphonic auto panning, delay and reverb. If esoteric is your bag, then Aparillo is definitely a synth to check out. I'm just gonna blow your mind with a tiny example of its wackiness. Look at that, credits on little swimmers there. Should give you some idea of what you're getting into. Um, so Aparillo is an FM synth. It's well, fundamentally, it's relatively simple. It is a two oscillator FM synth, but it has been designed in such a way as to confound your expectations and to hopefully make you program it in a little bit of a different way than you might normally. So let's have a quick play with it. There's absolutely tons in here. We really can't cover everything. Let's have a little play with it. Um, we'll start off in Algo mode one. So we'll play it with uh, operator one. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Um, operator two won't do anything until you put it in a different mode. But let's have Algo three. And so we can make a bit of a crazy tone there. And so this is a 16 voice synth. And what we can do that's quite interesting is we can shift the pitch of the voices around a bit. I, either like this, very directly, or what we can do is we can go into LFO1, which is set up to control this. And we can muck about with the jitter. Oh. So that should give you some idea of what the synth is capable of. Very rich, complicated voices. Let's have a muck about with some of the other controls. So you can control the phase as well. Do a bit of quantizing. There you'll see uh, the LFOs bopping around in steps and everything. Also, you've got some rather crazy effects like spatializer. Ooh. So clearly, if you like... Oh, outstretch soundscapes. There's a lot going on here. And of course you can do all kinds of um, modulation here. So you can uh, say choose, choose your jitter and then modulate that with one of your LFOs or the mod on or anything like that. So yeah, oh. So yeah, crazy and powerful, just like FM synthesis should be. Of four, Quanta by Audio Damage. This stereo granular synthesizer gives you up to 100 grains per synth voice and allows randomization and modulation of the granular sampling parameters. Drop a sample onto Quanta's granulator and go to work on the rate, pitch, direction, shape, length, panning, source and level to truly whip any sound into an exciting new texture. Quanta's sidecar oscillator is also on hand for thickening the sound and combining with your samples. The forward-looking Quanta is also equipped with MIDI polyphonic expression, shading options, dual mode filters, and flexible modulation to mess with any aspects of the sound. Right gang, I'm gonna take my life in my hands right now by trying to make a pad sound in Audio Damage Quanta. And let's check it out and see how I do. Um, we've got the default patch here. If you play a note, 
you're just hearing the built-in oscillator. We can muck about with that if we want. All very nice. I'm not gonna bother with that right now. What I'm gonna use instead is a sample. And I have one I've chosen here already. That's a nice crusty FM tone. I'm gonna drag that into Quanta. Now, if we play it back, we will just hear part of it a looping round. Well, the grains are gonna be scanning just this particular part. Let's turn this up a little bit. Now that's not very interesting. I mean, we can control the position of uh, whether our grains play. But what we want is that movement through the sounds like that. So what we can do is we can set up the matrix. You see, it's already selected. Oh, sorry about that. Grain's random. Uh, because we just clicked on um, grain position, that is automatically highlighted in the matrix, which is a kind of a cool touch. So what we're going to use is FEG2 to control the position. So if we turn this up. It's playing through the sounds. It's not doing a great job at the moment. Let me fix this up. So I'm going to select oscillator one, which is assigned to the filter. I'm just going to set that to something a bit more sensible. And I'm going to turn the attack time of FEG2 up quite a lot. So hopefully it should play through the sound. Now we can see what happens. There we go. And it's jumping back to a previous point, ah, because there's a loop set up here. So what I might do is change the loop to just scan back through the sample and we'll put it on ping pong mode. So hopefully now, oh, there you go. That's a little bit fast. Let's see if we can make that a bit longer. These envelopes are very flexible indeed. You can do almost anything you want with them. So there we go, we've got a bit of an evolving sound. Not quite enough for me. I want to make it a bit thicker, obviously, so I'm going to turn up the number of grains. Oh, yeah. And what I might do as well is turn up the randomization of the tuning on the grains as well. Oh, yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. And maybe we could randomize the position a bit as well. Give us a bit of a different texture. And we can change the shape of the grains as well. Maybe some of these will work a bit better for us. That's a bit more glitchy. That's a bit too much. I like this one. So there you go, fun, 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 granular action and plenty, plenty more to get your teeth into as this crazy ass modulation matrix reveals. At three, Cypher 2 by F Expansion. This recently updated version of F Expansion's original Cypher synth, Cypher 2 is all about that expression with its MIDI polyphonic expression support that works with keyboards that perform per note modulation. Cypher 2 has complex oscillators with FM, filter wave shapers, a choice of 30 effects, F Expansion's transmod modulation system, a scalable interface and preset morphing. You can morph between waveforms too and also turn them immediately into LFOs of the same shape. Cypher 2 is definitely a substantial synth and is recommended for people who want to really get their teeth into something meaty. Um, I struggled a bit uh, with getting my head around how the modulation works at first. I'll just show you what that do. Um, so let's take this init patch for example. Got a bit of a saw there that we can change the shape of with this. You can modulate that for some pulse width modulation. In fact, let's give that a go. Let's see how that works. Um, I mean, some modulation is hardwired. For example, you have your filter envelope, one thing here. So what we can do is... There you go, you can hear... 
the filter one is doing that thing with, with the uh, envelope modulation amount turned up. But what if we want to use something else? Or what if, say, we want to modulate our pulse width here? Well, what we do is we go to one of these slots up here. This one's already set to LFO1. Once that, once we clicked on that, we can then go onto here. And if we drag around this little halo, we can turn it up. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can speed that up with dual LFO1. There you go, you get the idea. Maybe if we can uh, take that off beats and have that on freak instead. There you go, as simple as that. But there is plenty more to get your teeth into here. I'll just have a quick play with the FM, why not? Oh, there you go. Oh, so already there, we're just having a little fiddle and we're already getting nicely crunchy. So yeah, F Expansion Cypher 2 definitely recommended if you want to get your thinking cap on. A two zone by Audier. With this synth, you get 151 wavetables, 22 effects, and a 32 step sequencer. But the most interesting thing about Zone is that it features a sequencer for every parameter on the whole synth, whether you're controlling oscillator properties, effect parameters, or global controls. Each sequencer can be run at a different speed. You can add as many of them as you want, and you can also choose from 100 preset step sequencer setups. With all this, Zone is a unique animated synth that can get you to the same sonic place in a different way, or take you to entirely new audio environments. I'm in the zone, Holmes. Let's check out what the deal is with the comprehensive step sequencing options in zone. Um, so we've got the uh, initial preset here. Not doing anything terribly interesting. So say we wanted to modulate the cutoff, we would just simply drag that onto a lane. Let's, uh, let's clear that uh, lane, why don't we? And then we can... Just draw stuff in. Very, very simple. Also, if we wanted to, we could use a preset pattern here. And you can do that with as many parameters as you like. And you can do stuff like randomizing. Oh yeah. Computers are working things out. And also, you, uh, there's a parameter mode which you're using, a note mode, which is basic step sequencer for your pitch and gait and stuff and everything, and you can have both. So look, this has already been randomized. Let's hear what's happened. Not crazy enough. And of course you could uh, just uh, go through and clear all that and create your own pattern. And get bleepy bloopy for days, guys. And at number one, it's VPS Avenger by Vengeance Sound. If there's one synth that truly pushes things into the future, it's Avenger. This monster is a completely huge synth that takes it to the max in every way. You get eight oscillator sources in Avenger, and you get to choose what each slot is stocked with. Yes choices include analog style synth waveforms, but also custom oscillator shapes, wavetables, draw your own, resampling, samples and multi-samples, feedback synthesis, FM synthesis, granular, and even, get this, an entire drum machine. Avengers effects section is also pretty massive. You get four racks plus a send and a master rack with eight effects each, and you get to fill those with a choice from 30 types. Each oscillator can be routed through the effects in its own way, so you could choose not to send your drums through the flanger, but still send it through the rest of your effects. Avenger is a very deep and powerful synth. Sure, there's a drum machine in there, which is pretty funny for some reason that I don't really understand, but also there is a lot of depth here. Now, it's not just cool in terms of being able to make really big and beefy and complicated sounds, which it definitely can do. But what I also like about Avenger is it takes a pretty sensible approach to workflow. And I'm gonna show you what I mean right now by making a real simple sound. So we're gonna start with the initialized patch, which is a sawtooth, which is all fair enough. Um, though there is a bit of delay and reverb on there, which is kind of unusual for an initialized patch. But let me show you this. Say, 
you want to work out what's going on with that reverb, when you just find it in the list of all the stuff that is on this generator, all the processing, and you choose go to, and look, it terminators in on it, which is very exciting and cool. So we'll turn those down a little bit. So what I really like about Avenger is the um, the way that it lets you browse your various sound sources. So there's a few different uh, types of sound generator, which you can find in here. You've got your VA shapes, you know, different folders full of stuff and everything. We've got some kind of waveform that you can draw here. But what I really like is how it deals with the wavetables. So you bring up your list of wavetables here, you click one, it just plays it for you. And you know what's going on and you're like, okay, I can cycle through that wavetable and have a nice time. So let's, let's just quickly make a sound, just, just so that you know we've got, we've got something to take home. I like this one, Saw Perfect Court. Perfect for making a little bit of a, uh, Blade Runnery sounds maybe. Um, so let's see what happens when we play this. It's nice and sorry, but it's not really utilizing the power of the wavetable. So what we do is, um, let's find where it goes. Okay, so we've got our editor here. This is the index. This is showing which part of the wavetable we're playing. And we don't want to sit here doing that manually all day. So we're going to just drag LFO1 to it and this controls the modulation amount. It's basically like every synth does it now. Let's see what we can do. Let's go for the slow flow. Oh yeah. Well, that's nice. That's what I'm all about. And you know we've got to bring the reverb and delay back in. Maybe more than before. Let's see what this does. Yeah, lovely. And we've got to have a bit of the tasty, tasty filter on there as well. So yes, just very much the tip of the iceberg there, but Avenger, definitely one to watch. Well, sadly, my artificial lifespan is up. All those moments are going to be gone like tears in the rain. Ugh. I'm going to turn into a giant pink building sized blob now. But if you've enjoyed what you've seen, then please consider tapping that notification button so you can join us next time as we take some more plugins out for a spin. Ta ra! Yeah.